We spent much of this day at the foot of the World Trade Center towers, or what's left of the World Trade Center towers. We were there with the rescue workers who were searching for any sign of life, but by late today, even for them, hope was beginning to give way to the grim realities of this attack. Ground Zero, right between the remnants of the two shattered towers. Late today, a body wrapped in the American flag was pulled from the wreckage. It was believed to be that of a New York City firefighter, one of perhaps hundreds who were caught in the collapse of the towers as they themselves were struggling to save the victims of the attack. In this plaza, once a crossroads of the world, hundreds of firemen, doctors, paramedics pulled at the mountain of debris. Shoulder to shoulder with average New Yorkers, iron workers, carpenters, nurses, all volunteers. John Steele is a volunteer nurse who hoped to make miracles here, but there have been precious few of those. You pulled two people out of here. Tell me about that. Uh, approximately 5 o'clock this morning. The sun wasn't really quite up yet. Uh, we located one victim. Uh, Alive? No. No. Unfortunately, deceased. Um, what was remaining of the victim, I should say. Um, and shortly after that, we uh, located another victim of the tragedy, uh, also deceased. We were able to retrieve that victim's body also and bring it to the morgue. Can you describe these people to me? Uh, physically, I really can't because fortunately there wasn't really much left of them. You've been all over this place where we are, ground zero for 18 hours. What are the chances? What are the chances that there's somebody alive, do you think? Well, uh, to be honest with you, we did uh, retrieve a, a police officer this morning who was trapped for approximately 11 hours last night. Uh, from what I understand, I can't confirm this is true or not, apparently he was on the 80th floor. That rescued officer was treated by Dr. Tony Daher. He and his partner, Dr. Lincoln Cleveland, are emergency room physicians from New York University Hospital downtown. I was here when they extricated the police officer at 8 o'clock this morning, who was in very good shape, actually, amazingly enough. Um, I think right now it's just going to be a very slow process of digging through rubble. We, we saw all our casualties yesterday at our hospital. It stopped at about noon. It got really strange and very spooky. It just it, Things just stopped coming in that had anything to do with the, with the blast. And, you know, at the time, I was thinking, you, you can read a couple things into that. Either people are buried and they're going to start bringing bodies out or just everybody died. Where are all the people who were in these buildings? The buildings were built, the structural support of the building is the shell, is the skin of the building. I remember when they were built, I'm a New Yorker. The innovative architecture, architecture of it is that the, the outer shell is where the strength of it is. And I think what happened is the whole thing imploded. It was like a chute that went straight down. What does that mean to the inside? It means that the explosion has nowhere to go except down. Um, I think another building collapses, there's toppling, pieces fall off, there's a diffusion of the energy and in this collapse the energy all went straight down. And I think that tragically anybody in that chute did, did not survive. I think it probably had the force of close to a nuclear blast. These firemen from Brooklyn have been taking the mountain down piece by piece, and many of them share the pessimism of the doctors. It's what? It's just huge rubble. Do you, do you see anything of the victims of the people who were in the building? Yeah, you've got 110 stories on top of uh, everybody over there. It's, it's just tough to say. 110 stories on top of everybody. That's what, that's what the two buildings were. Everybody's working together, yeah. you know, the whole city, trying to get people out. Get how do you, how do you dig this up, piece by piece, hand by hand? That's why you just make the chains and uh, get the debris out. That's, that's all you can do. 110 stories at ground level. 110 stories at ground level. If you, if you get a shot, you see the antenna that was on top of the tower. It's at ground right level. And yet there are no people to be seen. They pulled out a couple of Port Authority cops alive. Last night, right? Last night. Last night this morning. Suppose they were like on the 80th floor from what we heard, but uh, that's it so far. The only treatment at Ground Zero was of the rescue workers themselves, overcome by the dust and the smoke and the heat. 
this position is treating them and then sends them back in. What we're doing for the rescue workers right now is providing oxygen, giving them breathing treatments, washing out eyes, you know, washing faces, you know, giving them water, giving them Tylenol, aspirin, rehydrating them orally. That's about it. I mean, we're, we're, we're there for them. We're just, and they just pick right up and go back. The volunteers come from throughout the region. You look exhausted. It's a lot of work up there. Have you been able to pull anybody out of there? I haven't seen anybody come out. You haven't seen anybody come out? How long oh. have you been here? Oh, quite a few hours. There were thousands, probably, of people in these buildings. I'm sure. Where are they? Where did they go? So they've got to be down in those sub-basements, I would imagine. Down in the sub-basements? It's just right all the way down, right through. What do you make of this? It's a horrible thing. Something I'll hope to never see again. It's unbelievable. They say in uh, the companions to Pearl Harbor, Pearl Harbor, at least they could defend themselves. These were helpless people, you know, wives, women, children, and it was just uncalled for. This is the center of the rescue effort. Behind me, you can see what's left of one of the 110-story Twin Towers. A lot of these iron workers are volunteers who have come in from all over the city, men and women who are more used to putting these buildings up than taking them down. Fred Clark has done both here. As a carpenter, he helped build the towers 30 years ago. Now, he's working on the mountain of debris. You would never believe that it's gone. I mean, I look at it, this is, I've never seen anything. I was in Vietnam, I've never seen anything like this. Nothing like this to compare to this. What do you see now? What I see now is just heartbreaking, and I'm hopeful now I'm here with the rest of a lot of volunteers from my local, just hopefully, hopefully to find somebody still alive amongst this. As I say, the longer the time takes to get to it, I'm sure the less the chances are that anyone will be alive. But it's just, it's horrifying. It's horrifying. That has become painfully clear to many doctors who have been here from the start. You were here last night. What did you see then? I think the most vivid thing was a picture of that Century 21 sign, building on fire, and. Uh, the fire truck with uh, the American flag undulating uh, with the well-lit light. And uh, I think that said it all. You know, Doctor, it seems to me that it must be very frustrating to be a physician and to have really so few patients to treat here. You know, you know I, I don't know the numbers yet, but I, I certainly hope that means that a lot of people made it out alive. And, uh, obviously, it's horrific and incredible tragedy for those people who lost their lives. What do you make of this? Words fail. Words fail. When I call off your name, sound off loud and vigorous. Adrian! Pizza! All day, the help kept coming. Troops from the Army Reserve and the National Guard came to the battle zone to help secure the entire lower end of Manhattan Island, which is now closed. Closed for both the search for bodies and the search for clues. In addition here, there's a crime scene investigation. We've seen a number of FBI agents with trash bags loaded with debris, and we ran into one New York City police officer who told us that his unit is looking in all the buildings around us trying to find the black box recorder from one of the airplanes. They believe it could have ended up anywhere within a half mile area. In the search for bodies, there is a growing realization that there may be no one left alive. But for volunteer nurse John Steele and the others, there are powerful reasons to keep on going. It must be frustrating as a nurse to have so many victims here. Yeah and you can't get to them, and you can't help them. No, I, I think at this point, uh, when, you know, in that kind of situation, the best thing that we can do is to try to do the right thing for the remainder of the family. You know, try to locate their loved ones, properly identify them, and hopefully have, give them something to have a closure with, you know, to put this into perspective. For a moment of perspective, look at the Trade Center towers before the attack. 
Tower number one held a 300-foot mast used for television transmitters. Firefighters believe this is the tip of that mast today, standing upright but at ground level. By late afternoon, a fireman carried an American flag to the mast and raised it. Fellow firefighters wept as the stars and stripes flew in the smoke-filled sky and remained above them as they worked into twilight's last gleaming.